Once you discover how to use layers, you can expand your capabilities to create incredible compositions, repair images like never before, and use effects that just aren't available elsewhere. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to build one of the exercises that is in Lesson 8 of the Photoshop Digital Classroom book. I'm going to make this a really clean exercise and explain things as I go, so you should be able to follow along pretty easily. All right, so I have an image open, and I want to create a composite of this image and the PS0801 image and the 802 image. And one thing you want to check when you're creating composites is that you want to go down, holding down my Alt key and going down and checking, I'm seeing that this is 300 pixels per inch and its width is 2550. I go back to my other image, hold down my Alt or Option key, 3000 pixels and also 300 dpi. Now the reason why I want to check that is because if I am dragging one image into another, I want to have them relatively the same in size whether the DPI or pixel dimensions. Otherwise, I'm going to get a surprise when I drag one image into another and I either get a one huge image dropping in or one teeny eeny image dropping in. So it's a good idea to check and adjust your files appropriately if that's necessary. Now I'm going back to the 802 image and I have my move tool selected and I'm going to drag this up to the tab Hold, keep holding it and then drag it back down onto the image. Now in the book I tell you to view these two up and hold the shift key and drag one in. You can do it that way too. I just wanted to show you another method for moving one file to another file. And this created a new layer here which I'm going to name boy. Now what I'm going to do next is mask out the sky behind the boy so that we can see the other sky image. And I'm going to use the quick selection tool and just paint over him. And I'm not going to worry about making a really great selection because I am going to use a layer mask which will allow me to paint my selection and clean it up further. So once I have this selection here, I'm going down to the add layer mask button at the bottom of the layers panel. A mask is added. Now I can go in at this point and I can click on the mask, make sure it's selected, press X to make sure I have black selected, and I can zoom in to these different areas and clean them up. So you'll notice that I missed some of these areas, and that was because I did a really quick selection. Now I'm going to paint with black on that mask, and essentially what it's doing, you can see if I go too far, it's just simply blocking that area. I'm pressing Control or Command Z to undo that and then following this a little better. Now, if I want a harder edge, you can see this is leaking in a little bit because it's a nice soft edge, which doesn't work for this. I can hold down the shift key, shift right bracket produces a harder edge. You can see now I can get up there a little bit better. Now, if I go too far, I can press X and my foreground color is now white and I can paint with white. So if I want to clean up some of these areas, I can do that relatively easily. So maybe I'll go into the hand and clean this up. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I'm not really using this in production, but if you were doing something that uh, was important, you would want to use a much better masking skill than I am using. So I'm making this brush size a little bigger by pressing the right bracket only and painting this all in. So hopefully you've got the idea of how you can use masks to build your compositions.